Welcome back to our next episode on Katedi, where we are conducting the UNEB solutions for biology. Paper 1, actually it's the Fiore paper 553 stroke 1, UNEB 2024. Last time we covered the solution for the item 3, and today we are proceeding with section B. Section B has two parts. It has part one and part two. Part one has two items and you're meant to choose one item. On part one, it all questions come from the same element of construct, element of construct one, which states that a learner appreciates diversity of living things and sustainability of natural resources. Which element of construct is covering topic C? Diversity of living things, ecology, humans, and environment. This one is handled in senior one, and then the others come in the next classes. So, with this element of construct, you're simply going to check on the diversity of living things, ecology in your environment, and how humans relate with their environment. Simply that. So, we shall go to our unique item, item number four, which says that Mr. Omar had a piece of land with many shrubs and indigenous trees. He cleared the land in order to grow maize on a large scale. In addition, he destroyed all ant hills with chemicals because he feared that termites would attack his maize. He also applied fertilizers in his maize garden. This caused many challenges to the environment. Task. Explain. Part A. To Mr. Omar, the challenges he caused to the environment. Part B. Why? Explain why it was important for Mr. Oma to conserve his environment. Now with this item, the first part is saying that, explain to Mr. Oma the challenges he caused to the environment. You have to go back to your scenario and check what activities are, is Mr. Oma conducting that are having challenges on our environment. First of all, they told us Mr. Oma cleared a piece of land. This piece of land had shrubs. We all know that is vegetation. It had indigenous trees. Those are natural forests. And he, he cleared this piece of land just for growing his maize. And they are saying he was to grow maize on that scale. In addition, he also went ahead to destroy ant hills. We all know ant hills are also important. Much as they have termites, which may break down our crops, they are also important in the other way. So he applied chemicals which went ahead to kill these termites. And after that, still at the same time, he kept on applying chemicals which are fertilizers in his maize garden. Maybe to improve fertility of the soil, but to some other extent, it would also have a challenge on the environment. So we are going to check what are those challenges that he caused onto our environment. Part A, we are simply looking at challenges caused on the environment. Mr. Omar caused on the environment. Now with this, we shall see that there are several challenges, but you don't just put a challenge without explaining. You pick a challenge and how is it affecting the environment. Pick that challenge, explain it properly, how it affects the environment. That's how you'll be scored properly as explaining by understanding. Actually, understanding by explaining. Let's check. The first one was clearing indigenous trees and shrubs disrupted the natural habitats of many species, which led to decline in biodiversity. As many organisms were left, were left homeless and their sources of food were cleared. So you find that clearing, this, clearing the shrubs and indigenous trees, we are saying that it led to loss or disrupted natural habitats of many species, which led to decline in biodiversity. We all know that those shrubs and natural forests, they are homes for many living organisms in those forests. We have the snakes. You have the monkeys, you have several other organisms down there. So once you clear it, you're leaving these organisms homeless, and in the end, some of them are going to die. They will remain without a source of food. Some of them will simply die, and we shall have a decline in biodiversity, or simply a loss in biodiversity. So that's one of the challenges. Why is it happening? These natural forests and then the shrubs are habitats for many organisms. Once you clear them, they will be left homeless, and thus, we shall have a loss in biodiversity. Then the next one, clearing the land for maize plantation, left the land bare, 
exposing it to agents of soil erosion. We all know that once you clear this vegetation, you're clearing the vegetation. Yes, we understand you're going to carry out agriculture, but in the first phase, once you clear this vegetation, the land is left bare. The soil is left bare without a vegetation cover. In the end of it, it is highly exposed to agents of soil erosion, which will lead to soil erosion. And with that soil erosion, you're going to lead to a loss in soil fertility because all the top fertile soil will be washed away by this fast flowing water or even the wind, as well as other agents of erosion. So that's the next one we'll talk about. We we'll talk about clearing the land, clearing the shrubs and trees, left the soil bare, exposing it, exposing it to agents of soil erosion, plus loss of soil fertility. And sometimes you may even end up with creation of gullies with excessive soil erosion. Then Actually, our bear here it is written like that. Then the next one, we shall, we shall also have destruction of ant hills using chemicals doesn't only kill termites as intended, but also kills other essential soil microorganisms which affect their function within a soil. So you're applying these chemicals to kill your main intention. His main intention was simply to kill the termites. But those chemicals don't only kill the termites, but they also go ahead to kill useful microorganisms like the bacteria, which are important in ensuring soil fertility, also killing other organs like the earthworms. So you find that these chemicals are not only targeting the termites, but they're also going to end up killing the unintended microorganisms within the soil. So we shall also get destruction of antifibs with chemicals doesn't only kill termites, but also kills unintended essential organisms. We have the earthworms, someone could also talk about the fungi or the bacteria affecting soil fertility. That's affecting soil fertility. You also had the other challenge. We also had excessive use of fertilizers, results in two runoff whereby these fertilizers are washed into the water body, leading to eutrophication. First of all, this person here, Mr. Omar, was applying excessive fertilizers in his maize garden. In doing so, where are all these fertilizers ending up? They are all not going to be used by the maize plants. Some of it, when it rains, they are going to be washed away by the fast flowing water into the water bodies. And with increasing the concentration of these fertilizers in the water bodies, it results into outgrowth of algal blooms and these algal blooms in the end of it pollute the water body leading to a foul smell and things like that so you will find that excessive use of fertilizers results into runoff which carries these fertilizers into water bodies leading to eutrophication with eutrophication I'm simply meaning the excessive or rapid increase in the population of algae within the water body yes at some point someone may wonder how is application of fertilizers bad yes application of these fertilizers isn't that bad, but sometimes you find that members who are applying excessive of it, excess of it in the gardens, some of it is made unutilized by the plants and it is carried away by this fast flowing water if the nearby water bodies. Once these fertilizers reach the nearby water bodies, they are increasing the, the concentration of certain ions which are required by algae and require it results into a rapid outgrowth of algae within the water body and this algae later on once it reaches a stage of decomposition it results into a foul smell and reducing the water quality that's how water pollution comes in then we should also have clearing of these shrubs and the the other one we should, could also look at clearing of these shrubs and the indigenous trees Yes, to some extent, without the accumulation of carbon dioxide within the atmosphere. How? Someone may think that, it, but yet, the person is going to carry out plantation of maize, which would also still utilize the carbon dioxide deposit phases. That one, yes, will be correct. However, you will find that these indigenous forests and the shrubs were maintaining, were important in regulation of the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So once you clear it as you're preparing for your plantation, you're going to find that that time as you're preparing to plant your maize that's when you're going to have an increase in the carbon dioxide concentration 
within the atmosphere which are this in the long run results into what it harbors global warming or overheating of the habit surface then the other one you also look at the practice of going maize only this guy was clearing the forest and the shrubs just for an intention of going maize maybe to grow maize on a large scale along the seasons and going maize only that's simply what we call monoculture and monoculture has also its disadvantages first of all it results into accumulation of a given a given type of pests in the garden which are so the pests which are enjoying or surviving within a maize plantation and to some other extent growing maize only will also result into exhaustion of the soil how this maize is going to result into depletion it's going to deplete all the essential nutrients required by, by the maize plants and so some extent you find also find that the practice of growing maize only on the same piece of land consecutively will lead to soil exhaustion whereby specific nutrients are depleted from the soil leading to reduced soil fertility over time those are the ones we could talk about and so for others you will just go to Katedi where the other solutions are written but as for this curriculum of yours you have to make sure you point at each of the challenge talked about here. you point at each of the activities you have there and how each activity had a given challenge on the environment well explained that's how we'll be able to get the max once you just give the activity without giving how the activity causes this yes in the environment without a proper explanation we just have answered like you have just listed your answer and that will only give you one score that's what we had for part a yes our part b is saying that explain why it was important for mr Oma to conserve his environment in this you're going to look at just simple importance of conserving natural resources why is it important for you to conserve natural resources you go back they told that this guy was clearing the shrubs and the ligneous trees for plantation of his maize and also clearing the anthills just to ensure that the termites do not break down his maize crops in that let's take for instance someone goes ahead and encroaches on Madura forest a portion of it and starts clearing it in clearing that portion for Madura forest you first of all clear ligneous trees and we shall we shall check you clear in those indigenous trees you're going to stop us from benefiting from them how you look at the importance of those indigenous trees and the shrubs which you're clearing first of all we have these ones are helpful in maintaining biodiversity how do they maintain biodiversity first of all those places the shrubs and the indigenous trees they are habitat for many other living organisms we have the monkeys i talk about the monkeys the snakes the squirrels and all those other organisms which are dependent on those first of all they are combs or their habitat for these organisms and they are also a source of their food so you clearing them you deny them a chance of that place so you find that mr omar had to know that these shrubs and the natural forest help in maintaining biodiversity since they serve as a habitat for several other organisms in those areas and they are also a source of food to those very organisms so they maintain biodiversity in that way you reducing it would help to minimize loss of biodiversity or even extinction of some other species then you also have the indigenous trees and we have some of the indigenous trees not all of them but some of the indigenous trees are a source of herbal medicine here in this kampala region not only in kampala but in several other regions across uganda we have many herbal doctors who are benefiting a lot from these indigenous trees they pick the leaves the bark maybe even sometimes the stem they do some processing and in the end of it they end up with herbal medicine which is useful in curing several infections and they are benefited from it so once you move this you deny these guys a chance to make a living out of the herbal medicine so indigenous trees are a source of herbal medicine some of them we also have trees and shrubs are useful in absorbing carbon dioxide which mitigate climate we all understand that these trees and the shrubs they absorb carbon dioxide which is being utilized in their process of photosynthesis to manufacture their food as they are doing so they are taking up carbon dioxide in the end of it reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in doing so it reduces the impact on our climate 
the impact of carbon dioxide that it would have on our climate, how it reduces what would have as global warming. We also have some of the some of these trees are a source of fruits to man and other organs. We all understand that people living around those forests, they normally go there to harvest some fruits. There are some edible fruits which they harvest and not only they not only man, but even some other organs. I talked about the monkeys. They are also benefiting from those forests for a source of food. They feed on the leaves, the fruits, the seeds, and several other things, plus even the roots. Then we also have these shrubs and trees provide a vegetation cover. In providing a vegetation cover, they are preventing soil erosion. Because we all understand once the soil is left bare, it is seriously exposed to agents of erosion. So once we have those trees and the shrubs around, they provide a vegetation cover, preventing soil erosion, and in doing so, it maintains soil fertility. We also have the other one. trees are useful in rainfall formation. We all understand that trees undergo what we call transpiration. And during transpiration, water is lost from these plants in the form of water vapor. Where does this water go? This water goes to the atmosphere, where it reaches a point where it cools down, condenses, forming back the rain, which comes back as precipitation. Then we also have these trees are also useful in acting as windbreakers. During strong wind days, trees are helping reducing the speed of wind. And in doing so, it helps to protect our property and some other crops we would have in our gardens. So with this, you simply look at the importances of these natural forests, the shrubs and all those other things that Mr. Uma was affecting. Not only that, I talked about Mavira forest. Just say, for instance, someone goes ahead and hears the whole Mavira forest just because they want to plant maize. First of all, you, you're stopping us from benefiting from its purpose as being as a tourist attraction center. Because we get, we gain a lot from that, that forest. Members come from every point of the country, or even from other countries, just to have a look at that natural forest. And in doing so, it's important in promoting tourism in our nation. So, simply we'll look at the importances of conserving natural forests and natural resources. That's all we could give. There are even other more which we could talk about. So, for other responses, just go to our app, KTD, and check in the solutions they have put there. You will find more other explanations. Thank you for listening.